is this V? What what are you pushing on us? What what is this harmful and dangerous misinformation? It's a good way to stop the year. And it's not me pushing it, it's the science. The journalists have commuted with the science and they have churned from the bowels of the press this article on the masses. Now it is interesting though. Why, why are they posting something like this? And the answer is because this was posted in 2017. It's an old article. It's really interesting when you read all the articles. I, I love doing that, especially if they are three or four years old. It goes to show how much the press lies to people, how much they're trying to manipulate the public into pushing them towards certain opinions. You know, I, I showed the Canadian this article. I'm not, I'm not going to name drop him this time. But maybe some of you guys can figure out who it is. And, uh, he, you know, I, I showed him this. Like, what do you think? And it's like, well, of course it's possible. Yes, yes, it's absolutely possible. I mean, look, this is a scientific proven thing. And, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like saying that if you get a job as a waiter, it is possible that someone is going to tip you with a lottery ticket. And that lottery ticket may actually be the jackpot. And when a person says that I'm crazy, I can show them the event that actually happened. The waitress actually did get a, such a tip. But my point is like, just because it can happen, right? So it's not a lie. Like the statement is actually true. Like fact checkers got nothing on this. Like it can actually happen. Yes, cosmic particles have been scientifically documented to be able to destroy electronics, all right? But, but like, to apply it to this way, it's like to, to, to make it think that, yes, only the, the counting machine was affected, but all the other gadgets around it, all the phones, all that, those were fine, yes. Why was this article posted, though? Well, it's 2017. What was happening in 2017? Do you guys remember? I remember it was the thing like the Russians have hacked the elections. Do you guys remember that? Oh my God, what wasn't that a trip? Oh, down the memory lane, I mean. Uh, it, was, it was a very interesting time. Yes, uh, hashtag not my president was trending. Uh, social media was incredibly irresponsible. I, I'm glad that they got their shit together after Biden won the presidency. And all of a sudden, any talks or any doubts... Or, or, or any questions about the sacredness of the holy American election of 2020 uh, got banned. I, I have seen people getting zooked faster for questioning the, the holy elections of the Kingdom United States. They, they got zooked a lot faster than people who are saying slurs in their videos. And I, I, it, it, was, it was something to behold, you know. The, the elections did became sacred. It's almost like... Social media had blasphemy laws. The elections were sacred, and if you blasphemed against them, you could lose your account. To be fair, they wouldn't shut down an entire channel. But they would give a community guidelines strike. I don't know why they reversed course. Like, all of a sudden, they're saying, well, actually, you know what? Um, maybe, maybe you can question it. I mean, you know, it was questioned under Bush. Uh, the Clintons questioned it. Um, maybe, maybe Trump should be able to question it as well, but, but like uh, a little leeway, you know, just don't talk about how it, it, it was problematic. You, you can say it was problematic, just don't talk about how. Oh, I see. Wow. But it, it, it's really interesting, right? Because, um, you, you hear the World Economic Forum and, and they're like, oh, the, the cyber attack. Like, we are moving toward the potential the cyber attack. And I'm like, well, if that's the case, why not use paper? I, I, I you know, like, the world exists for more than 2,000 years, and uh, the, the cyber attack is only something that's recently happening. And it, it's also interesting and fascinating, because they're talking about cosmic particles and the cyber attack. But at the same time, they're suggesting, oh, we need to use the central bank digital currency and everything needs to be online and electronic. And I'm like, okay, but like, what about the Zabur attack then? You know, it's actually funny. And I, like, this is, by the way, um, happened to a Romanian hospital. It was at the time where uh, pipelines were getting hacked in the US. You know, like something that I can't comprehend. Like, what do you mean the pipeline got fucking hacked? It's, it's a pipe, right? Like the oil goes through it. What the fuck is there to hack? 
I'm sure that is an explanation for it. Uh, but a Romanian hospital also got hacked in the same manner, right? And they were like, um, if you don't give us this amount of cash in this account, we're going to never release your data, right? So the Romanian hospital went into the archives and they pulled the actual paperwork and started working with paper. In Romania, when I was at the hospital, I, I think they still do it. I I'm not sure if they changed it or not. Uh, everything was electronic, like, like you, you had the patient's records in a computer, but at the same time you had the patient's records on a piece of paper, and you give the paper to the patient, and, and there's like duplicates. There's a paper to the patient, and there's a paper that goes into the hospital's archive. And, and like the hospital archive is a big room, it's got a lot of files and stuff, and I think like they hold them for more than 40 years. There's nothing, I mean sure, you know, you can hack the hospital, right, and, and it's going to slow down the process, but at the end of the day, there's still paperwork, like, they can still continue operations as normal, but for some reason, no, like, other countries don't do that, they, they get rid of paper altogether, which brings me to the question of the American elections, you know, like, every, every single time the Democrats and the Republicans, I know they try to memory hold it, but, but every single time they question the fact that the election is uh, having, like, this digital component to it, right, now, of course, I understand that the digital components is 100% safe and secure. There's no issues with it. Of course, of course. Uh, but my question is, like, if there are people that, that do not trust the system, and it seems to be more than 30% of them, according to the last poll, isn't it, like, similar to, to how when a wife walks in the room and, and the husband immediately hides the phone? Right? Like, wouldn't that get, get the wife to, to question, like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you hiding the phone? I mean, normally she probably wouldn't even want to check, but now that she saw that the husband is immediately trying to hide, she, she would start asking questions, which are reasonable, right? So what is the solution? Well, the solution is for the husband to show the, the, the wife the phone. Even if he wasn't cheating, it doesn't matter. Like, at that point, when, when she catches you, like, trying to, to hide the phone from her, like, yeah, she's going to have reasonable doubts. And not to mention, you know, the thing with the ID, like, uh, as, as a Romanian, I'm, you know, when I go to vote, I show ID. I understand it's very racist. Um, but in the case of the United States, <clears throat> they're actually saying that requiring people to show ID to vote is racist. Which, which brings the question, why are the Democrats pushing to abolish the ID? I mean, if it's a symbol of racism, well, why should people even have ID to begin with? Because if you're asked to show it, then it's racist, right? So, like, why, why even have it? It's also interesting that during the pandemic, showing QR code, which is on a smartphone and is more expensive than an ID, that's not racist. Interesting way to start the year, isn't it? Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.